was a variety. So, welcome to the Studio Nelson Masterclass. I'm not Jeff. Yeah. I don't know if we should be cheering Okay, so, um, obviously, y'all have taken the test already. You kind of know what's up. Um, we're talking about the Enneagram today. And the songs that we're playing for are a set of songs by Sleeping at Last. He's a guy who just writes music about all sorts of weird things. He does this project called Atlas where he just takes themes and does a set of songs on like all of those themes. And so he's done like North, South, East, and West is a group of songs. And all of the planets is a group of songs. And the one he's working on right now is Enneagram. He has everything except for type nine done at this point. A came out like last week and I was like, yes, just in time. But anyway, um, so I got obsessed with the Enneagram <coughs> over the summer while I was marching drum corps. Yeah. Um, we had a visual. <laughs> Jacob knows. He sat in front of me on the bus while this entire thing happened. Yeah. Um, so we had a visual tech that I bonded with really quickly and like helped me a lot because I was very bad at marching when we started this summer. Um, and after a particularly difficult rehearsal, uh, I just went to him like, "Okay, how can I be handling myself better so that things go better?" And he's directed me to this. Um, which kind of looks like a pentagram, but it's not a cross. So, the, um, it works, all, I know a lot of us are familiar with Myers-Briggs, uh, which is, you know, has the 16 types and it has all the letters and whatever. This is only nine types, which is significantly easier to learn. Which is part of why I like it. I also think that information that it gives is a lot more complex and a lot more just accurate for people. Um, there's also more of an emphasis on it's okay if not everything fits. Uh, but regardless, I have gotten a lot of better personal understanding from looking at myself through this lens. And so I hope that we can all do that together and all become better people together. Yay! So, there are, like I said, there are nine types. They all have names. Depending on which study or of the Enneagram you're learning from, the different, the names are actually different. Uh, Bottom line, I like to use the numbers because A, that's what, cons what is consistent, and B, there is no bias in the numbers. Some, you know, different words can have different connotations uh, and can be misleading because it's hard to fit any one of these personality types under just one word. But uh, this is, these are the titles uh, from the Enneagram Institute, which is the most thorough and most researched uh, group working with this. Um, clarifications, there's a lot of um, there is no type that is better or worse to be than another type. So, Daniel's smiling because he... <laughs> there are some, some types that get looked down on a little bit. Um, we'll talk about that. Legitimately, every type has their strengths, every type has their weaknesses, and being a better person is learning how to work with those strengths and weaknesses, whatever they are. Some of those strengths and weaknesses will be more frustrating for you to deal with, depending on what type you are. But understanding all of that is just helpful. Um, the order of the numbers. One is not better than nine or vice versa. The, there is no hierarchy to that. The only significance of the numbers is when we talk about your potential subtype, it has to be an adjacent number. We'll talk about that a little bit later. You do not change types over time, caveat, once you're an adult. Children, you should not type children because they're very difficult to go put, uh, understand because they're constantly changing and figuring out themselves. Like, I mean, we've all been there. We all know what high school is like. Um, so, um, generally, we don't type children because they are still developing. Our personality sets in more firmly to where we can study like this around age 20. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> The type, none of the types are masculine or feminine. Um, generally speaking, it's split 50-50 on what gender is what type. Um, the uh, thing to keep in mind, society tends to put women in the role of a two, which we'll talk about in a second, is the health. The, the unfortunate societal, like the woman is the wife, so they have to help the husband do everything that, well, thankfully we're getting away from. 
uh, as a society is still ingrained enough that if you are a woman and you test uh, two as one of your top several types, that does not mean that you are not a two. Two, like every other type, is split 50-50 gender wise. But if you read through two and you're like, this isn't really me at all, then you know. But that's the, one of the two for women is something that you can disregard a little more easily than the other types because of that uh, societal issue. Not everything about every type will fit you. Um, some people get frustrated working with it not because there's too many, there, there's a, people have different issues here. Either they think they're a little bit of every type, or they think that none of the types fit them. Just know neither is really the case. This system, like any system, is imperfect, but it's really, really useful. And so not everything has to fit kind of right. Not as a person who identifies as six wing seven, not everything about a six makes sex for me. But enough does that it's been really helpful for me. And so just keep that in mind with uh, figuring out yourselves too. Um, that being said too, you're, this, with the system typically how it's taught is you're supposed to identify as one type and have a subtype and know what that happened. Yeah. Personally, I know I pull a lot from three, despite the fact that I'm definitely six wing seven, after having thought about this a lot. I keep that in mind and learn from that three side of myself, even though I don't directly correlate with that. And so there's something to be said as well. Not everybody that teaches the Enneagram will agree on this. I think there's something really valuable about learning like all of the top three or four types you get, because they are all a piece of you. Um, if you're one of those people like me that feels like all of the types are a little bit of themselves, that means you're probably a three, six, or nine. I don't quite know how that works, but three, six, and nine are kind of special because they're connected by a triangle rather than all of the other lines that are going on, um, and that's one of the things. Also, you will probably not walk out of this class today being 100% sure about what your type is. Some people, they read like one type description and they're like, wow, this is me, this is super obvious. Some people, it takes like a month of sitting on a bus reading through all of the type descriptions after rehearsal days before you actually figure out what that is. Um, it, everybody's journey is a little different with this and just have patience with yourself. Um, so here's my test results. Um, so as we can see, I have an obvious top three, a middle pack that's very close, and I'm definitely not an inner one. So, oh, go ahead. So, um, some people will get spread <coughs> clumps like this, some people um, will get like 30 at their top score and two for their bottom score. It just depends, there's not a good way to predict it. But generally, your dominant type is the top one, or is in the top three. It is very rare that your dominant type is not in the type of top three types out of this. Um, keep in mind, though, this is not the end all be all. Seven, which I identified pretty clearly as my wing or my subtype, is below five, the other option for me as a six. They are also only one point away. But don't let, if you feel something, like if you really feel like you are a certain way, you're probably. Wings. So, as I kind of talked about before, as a six, I can also say I, I am a six wing five or a six wing seven because those are conjacent types. Meaning that I also have a little, a uh, little bit, or for in my case, a very strong bit um, of seven ingrained with my six. Well, I'll, when we get to six and seven in the actual part, I'll explain. Uh, how that works a little better. But just know, whenever you start to land on one, consider how the type on either side can also have an effect on what makes you tick. Also, if you have two adjacent numbers that are very high, it is likely uh, that you are dominant in one and winning in the other. I think I'll, from what, yes, Charlie. Sorry, can you explain the, the way I'll just how many like one to four and one to seven. So we will get to that. Like we will get to the actual lines in the middle in a second. Um, as far as because each each individual type is connected to four other types. 
So let's take 9, for example. Can wing to 8 or 1 and is connected to 9 to 6 and 3. Those are all of the ones as a 9 that you would consider. Um, so getting to those lines, that is your directions of stress and growth. So as you are growing and doing well as a person or as you're getting particularly stressed out, you start to resemble one of the other types. Um, so, for example, 2 goes to 4 in growth, meaning that the very other people-centered 2 starts to really develop a personal identity. Goes to 8 in stress, meaning that they start to get more confrontational and more angry with other people when they are generally very uh, people-pleasers. We also relate the types to each other in what center they're in. So 8, 9, and 1 are the instinctive or gut center, meaning that they, um, out of their brain, their heart, or their gut or instincts, um, they have a more close relationship with their instincts. Feeling center have a relationship. We call them the heart triad, more of a relationship with their feelings. And thinking center live in their head. Oh, no, there we go. And each of these centers has an emotion that they deal with more regularly. <coughs> Anger, shame, and fear, which for modern day I like to kind of recategorize shame as self-loathing, fear as anxiety, and anger as judgment. If that helps, but things in the perspective for people. So uh, going on to actually the individual types. Starting with the heart triad, we will start with two. I promise we will get back around to one by the end. But we're skipping one so that we can explain one with the other types in its triad. So two is the helper. Who had two as their top one? And who had two as one of their top three? OK. So twos are generous, empathetic, people-pleasing, and uh, in unhealthy, they can get a little possessive. Their basic desire is to be loved, which I know is something like we kind of all can relate to. <laughs> all of these types are kind of something we all can relate to. When we talk about basic desire and fear, that is the most governing thing uh, in all of the things that help us make decisions and you know about ourselves. Um, twos are guided by their need to be loved and their fear of um, they want to express their feelings for others, to be needed and appreciated, to get others to respond to them, and to vindicate their claims about themselves. Twos, when they're healthy, can be just the best friends you've ever had because they know everything about you, and they're uh, just super generous, loving people. When twos aren't healthy, they can, like I said, get possessive. Um, they twos want to help you, but they also want, like, they want you to be successful. They also want to be the reason that you were successful, sometimes. And as a member of the heart triad, uh, twos attempt to, their emotion they're dealing with is shame, and they attempt to control it by getting a like them and feeling better about themselves that way. So, things twos would say. So, when we, um, so, the way this whole thing is going to go is I'll have one slide that's a lot of information and the other slide that's more things this type would say and some mostly fictional, a couple of real life examples of <laughs> uh, a two or whatever type we're on. Um, also with this, going back to those songs, the last quote or two is less something that a two would say and more a quote from the song uh, because Sleeping at Last is a wonderful lyricist. Um, that kind of embodies uh, something particularly trying for the two or a way that the two grows. So twos are people pleasers. They crave close relationships with their friends. They give to people in so much that they often feel like they don't get the same back from other people. And that can be a real source of frustration. They're also the type of people that listen to other people more than they talk about themselves. Oftentimes, if asked to talk about themselves, twos will deflect and say, no, tell me about your problems. Tell me about what's going on in your life. I don't want you to worry about me. And twos can really grow 
by learning to talk about their, themselves and recognize and validate their own problems. And quote from Sandy Glass, it's okay if you can't catch your breath. You can take the oxygen straight out of my own chest. Oh, wait, I didn't talk about it people. So, Hagrid from Harry Potter. So, Yay. FYI, I'm sorry if you're not familiar with Harry Potter or Parks and Rec, because those were a lot of the examples that I could come up with. But, uh, I know, for, trust me, that's the only office one we'll get with Parks and Rec. <laughs> um, but, um, Hagrid is, from Harry Potter, he's like always there for the children. He is always trying to help them. He like gets a little baby dragon because he was feeling a little lonely, so he tries to raise a dragon. He is always looking to form better relationships with other people. And Pam from The Office, I don't actually know The Office spread that well, one of the quotes I read is, she always puts candy out on her desk to make everybody else happier, which is a very true thing to do. Threes. Who is type three as their top one? And who had it in their top three? Yeah. <laughs> so as musicians and horn players, I'm not surprised that we got a lot of that. Uh, threes are the type of people who are adaptable, excelling, driven, and image conscious. They are your straight-A students who want to go to the Ivy League school and be the best at the best at everything they do. They're super competitive, um, and they really, at their core, want to be valued. They want to be just the best at what they do, and they're afraid of being worthless. They want to distinguish themselves from others. They want your attention. They want to be admired. They want to be impressive. And as far as dealing with shame, something we'll see actually with these dominant emotions I was talking about, the ones on the triangle have a more tricky relationship with their dominant emotion than the other two. Threes, while shame is an important thing for them to figure out, they like to deny their shame. They like to keep accomplishing things so that they can feel better about themselves and forget. Um, and until they recognize their own worthfulness without accomplishments, threes will just continue to do things and do things and do things and constantly not feel fulfilled, which I know is something a lot of us as music students here can relate to. Uh, the most, no, like they're, um, it's, it's so <laughs> it is a bit, like in the the studies that I've, uh, and stuff I've done with mindfulness since I've gotten here really point at least for me point out that three part of me as being something that I um, work with a lot. So threes go to nine in stress, meaning that the generally driven three gets more apathetic when they get uh, burnt out. And uh, they go to six, meaning they're a little more interpersonal. They think about other people more. Uh, and they they're just generally get a little less self-centered when uh, they grow. So, threes. We have, and I think every three in the room is cringing a little bit at seeing Leslie on the screen. Leslie is a three because she is constantly, throughout the entire series of Parks and Rec, working to be the best politician for Pawnee, Indiana, that she can possibly be. <laughs> she has all of those women politicians on her wall that she idolizes and she wants to be just like them, just as successful, just as important, just as impactful as they are. And I would also say that she definitely wins into two because of the way she really genuinely cares about her constituents. Eugene from the Try Guys. How many of you are familiar? Because I, okay, that's enough. So, um, I watch a lot of the Try Guys. They're one of my easy, like, when I need to just watch something and detach, they're fun and funny and whatnot. Eugene is the one that always wins everything that they do. I know, like, I watched one where they were like doing silk trapeze stuff and he like on the first time they got on the silks he's the one that immediately climbs all the way to the top and he's like i did it and then climbs back down eugene wings four which we'll talk about in a second um because he also has is very concerned with personal expression creating an identity for himself he is very fashionable person 
So threes, I'm going to just jump to the bottom two here. I'm so exhausted. It's so exhausting on the silver screen where I play the, play the role of anyone but me. Threes tend to put on the facade of other types all the time to try to interact better with the people around them and make start to make friendships and relationships so that they can network. And that's why three is one of the uh, is one of the ones I point people to when they say I think I'm all of the types because threes try to be all of the types in trying to look impressive to everybody else. And some the way threes can grow putting their greatest failures on display and realizing that they are worthy of love anyway. Fours. Um, so threes and twos are definitely more extroverted types. Four is our first that is more introverted. They're expressive, dramatic, sensitive, and can be reserved. They are very, very concerned with developing a personal identity. Who, sorry, I forgot to do this part. Who had four in, as their top one? And who had four in their top three? Whoa. Wow. Ooh, okay. I'm actually not surprised at all. I'm, just I'm not either. Really no, knowing our studio, I'm not surprised. <laughs> but um, we're still going to learn about four because we learn all of the other types to build relationships. Yeah. So, um, but I can go through this one a little quicker. Fours are very, very, very uh, concerned with not necessarily sticking out from the crowd and being excellent, but um, being their own person. They don't want to be like anybody else. Fours are kind of a hipster, the hipster type. Um, and the two examples I have are April Ludgate <laughs> from Parks and Rec, because she is constantly just the antithesis of everything that is going on. She has to be doing the opposite so that she can separate herself from everybody else in the office. And Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables. Who is familiar with this one? Nope. Okay, then we'll not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's a, a more extroverted forward, so I thought she was a good example, but nobody knows who she is, so that's fine. Um, fours are generally comfortable um, sitting with sad or angry emotions. They like to feel their emotions. Um, they're very good at taking the time to process them, and they're uh, you know being in the feeling triad. They're very good at uh, knowing how they feel, knowing why that is, and processing their emotions. Um, and fours also just tend to feel like there's a part of them that's missing constantly. And the way for them to grow is to realize that they already are the person that they've been dying to become their whole life. So, moving, ooh, moving to the heady people. Um, so the next three types are all people that kind of tend to live in their head. Overly uh, concerned with uh, the pursuit of knowledge, especially in the case of five. Who had five in their top three? Or is there who had it as their very top one. Just, okay, cool. So, um, fives, perceptive, innovative, secretive, isolated. They desire to be capable and competent. They fear being useless. They are the brain people. Um, they are constantly pursuing knowledge, uh, just researching things on their own because they just want to know more about it. Um, they're also the kind of people who have a very specific amount of energy that they can spend on other people in the um, And once they are a little bit more on the, definitely a bit more on the introverted side of things, and that makes their relation, building relationships with other people very interesting for guys. Um, they, they just kind of want to figure everything out. They want to be able to put things in boxes to understand. They very much like uh, categorizations um, and just building a structure for understanding other people, the world, themselves, etc. Um, and they cope with their fear. Fear is the dominant emotion, or anxiety uh, is the dominant emotion of this head triad. And they tend to be a little bit afraid of the world, and so they withdraw from it. They get more isolated uh, and are more introverted to try to deal with the fact that uh, sometimes all of the stimuli of, of the world are a little bit much for them to deal with. So, our two examples are Snape and Sherlock Holmes. Holmes is my favorite example for a five because he's just, you know, exactly kind of what I said. He's very brainy. He's 
investigator, literally just like investigates things, all the mysteries, all that jazz. Um, and the way he puts, you know, like putting together the information to solve what's going on in a crime scene, etc. Uh, it's just very fun. Uh, Severus Snape as well is one of my fives because he's very withdrawn. And I would say that he wings into six um, because six is the loyalist and his undying loyalty to Lily Potter um, definitely puts him in that way. Um, and makes him with that specific person or in regard to how he nurtures Harry by being really mean to him through the entire series. Um, it's, it's, an ex, it's an extension of his relationship and his love for Lily, um, and his just undying loyalty to her is, and the fact that she was one of those people that was able to get him out of his introverted five shell uh, was something that makes it really obvious that he wakes into six and is willing to take that avenue of a close, secure relationship to get out of the box a little bit. Fives totally tend to live in their head. They don't like to be uninformed. They do get exhausted by people. They need their alone time to recharge. And this isn't one of my favorite quotes. There wasn't really a good quote in the song for five, so we'll just get that. The Loyalists. This is my time. So who, who else had six as their top one? Oh, yeah. So this is interesting. <laughs> this is interesting because it tied with in teacher, Teachers of the Enneagram, some of them say half of the population is sixes. In this small subset, which is not statistically significant, half of us are sixes. So, um, six, is, six was a really interesting one for me. When I was... Uh, learning it, I immediately saw security and said, I don't care about security, I'm not this one. And then after <laughs> going through thinking I was a four and then realizing that was introverted, I'm like, nope. Uh, <laughs> going to two and then realizing I was too self-centered to be a two. Uh, <laughs> um, Oops. Eventually I landed on six because for me, that sense of security is being sure about things. Um, a lot of times I tend to take, especially when like any kind of group project happens, I will complain about it, but I will do the entire project myself to make sure that it's done right, to be sure nope. that um, <laughs> I'm doing my part to make everything successful. Sixes want to be secure, and sixes are the kind of really tend to fall back on their friends. Um, they need a close network of people to be able to rely on because they don't trust themselves. Sixes really struggle, tend to struggle with anxiety. Um, having, note, lying between um, legitimate like, anxiety that you take meds for, sort of anxiety, and just the general anxiety that humans deal with. Um, Medical conditions do not ter uh, determine your type at all. Um, but anyway, that, that being said, six is one to have security, feel supported by others, to have reassurance, and to understand what other people think of them. Um, and they really, again, they struggle with anxiety a lot and with self-confidence a lot. And so they're always working to build that confidence. Um, and stress. They go to three, they get a little perfectionistic, uh, a little bit down on themselves, and can uh, get a little condescending toward others too. Um, and in growth, they go to nine and just <coughs> center a little bit more. Um, sixes, in, in this uh, head triad, they have the most fear and anxiety of anybody in this triad. Um, and which, as I said, causes them to be <laughs> trusting themselves. So, oh. sixes are constantly, sixes, con no, I promise this will be great. Sixes constantly think of the worst case scenario. That's why C-3PO is here, because he is a walking, talking worst case scenario. Every time, every time they're about to jump to hyperspace, he's like, we have one in 137 chance that we survive. And they just like push the button and they're fine because it's a movie. But he is, as a robot, 
is constantly thinking, you know, just spewing, here's why we shouldn't do this. Um, sixes t sometimes have the reputation for pulling projects back and slowing things down. That can be very frustrating for go-getters like threes and sevens. Um, but that is essential for those types that are like, let's jump in, let's do this, let's get this done, because sixes think all the way through everything to make sure that everything is going to be okay. Um, they tend to overthink as well, though. Um, and the, this, the, these two quotes from the class really get me. What would it feel like to put this baggage, baggage down? But if I'm being honest, I don't know how. Sixes often feel like they're stuck in their anxiety and they just don't know how to uh, let go. Um, and th this next line, I want to take shelter, but I'm ready to fight somewhere in the middle. I'm a little paralyzed, speaks to the six. Interesting, because there are two types of sixes. Phobic sixes and counterphobic sixes react to their lack of trust in others or in themselves by either um, being very compliant and uh, following authority or doing the exact opposite and rebelling against everything that's put in front of them. Sixes have a really interesting relationship with authority figures, whether that's political structures, teacher-student relationships, etc. I'm a phobic six. I tend to go along with what's going on in the structure, um, work with, uh, I tend to be really aware of like my place in things and I try to work within that uh, to help myself grow. But some sixes are the exact opposite. They, uh, in not trusting themselves, also don't trust the people uh, put ahead of them. And uh, uh, Neville Longbottom is here too because he's a really, really good example of a six who starts at the beginning of the Harry Potter series as a uh, totally scaredy cat, uh, super like I'm gonna follow all of the rules because that's provided security for him, and grew to really champion himself and uh, stick up for others by the end of the series. Yeah, John? You said phobic, and what was the other one? Counterphobic. And sixes can grow by learning to keep their anxiety at bay and just learning to trust themselves. The, six, the sixes' journey is learning to trust themselves, generally speaking. And also, like, we've talked about, oh, sixes are anxious all the time. Sixes are some of the most fun, not to my own horn, some of the most fun people to be around. Because when they are healthy, they're really funny people. Because they can look at Because they can, no. I love it. Because, so funny. <laughs> so, no, sixes, um, when they are healthy and can look at themselves and kind of joke about it, they have a lot of funny stories to tell because their anxiety makes them do some really stupid things. <laughs> Seven are the enthusiast. This is Jeff's type. No, Jeff is not one. Jeff, one is at the bottom of Jeff's list. Um, so, who had seven as their top one? Who had it in the top three? Yeah. Okay. Sevens like to have fun. Yeah, we do. Everybody <laughs> likes to have fun. But yeah. Sarah, Sarah, I see you back there. All of the top seven count as your top three. What? All of the top seven count as the top three. Ten. Because they're, your, your scores are so close to each other, like you can consider all seven yeah. of the top. Oh. I say everything then. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that. I know. We'll talk about that. Um, but, but look at three, six, and nine. Everything. Ten. Ten. <laughs> ten. Anyway. Um, sevens are uh, really good at being a good time and really bad about dealing with any emotion that isn't happy and exciting. So sevens like to have a good time. They're really bad at dealing with any emotion that isn't fun and exciting. Um, they are very spontaneous people. They like to, they're always up for a last minute adventure or a midnight lunch at McDonald's or whatever. Um, they tend to be loud, very extroverted, have a lot of friends, um, etc. But they are not good at processing 
uh, difficult emotions like pain, anger, fear, as the triad indicates, etc. Yeah, I mean, so related to that, right before this master class, seven is in my top three, by the way. Um, there was a nail in my tire. It was 616. I saw that Firestone was open till 7, so I drove there and got it replaced and got here right on time. Because I was like, oh, I should do this. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah. And then I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do it right yeah. now. Yeah, sevens are very easily distracted people. They're totally <laughs> to uh, completely go off plan because they're like, wow, a strawberry. I should eat that right now. And then two hours later, they still haven't started their homework. Yeah, but it's Sevens are also the kind of people that have all sorts of ideas. Their, con their brains are constantly generating ideas or fun or productive things that they should be doing. Part yeah, of this is like just it. because their brain, yes, that, yes, Jeff and I. Part of it is because no. their brains are just like on fire on, all the time because they are the most energetic out of all the types. Part of that is because it's a defense mechanism against it, distracting themselves with other things helps them avoid processing emotions. Uh, so, in stress, sevens go to one, they get uh, more perfectionistic and very self-critical. At five, uh, in growth, they are able to throttle their energy a little bit better and get really invested in one specific <coughs> project rather than jumping from project to project and not finishing anything. Peter Pan and Tigger are our seven examples because they're both youthful and full of energy and always are interested in adventure. Um, sevens are the kind of people that talk more than they listen. They love to talk about themselves. Threes do too. Um, and uh, sometimes they come off as aggressive when they're just really excited about something. Yeah. Which Jeff does, <laughs> I do. It's, yes, Reed. Is this Peter Pan from the movie or the musical? I think it's Peter Pan from Kingdom Hearts, actually. <gasps> Good oh, game! No, I still haven't played it. Because he looks super animated, so I think it's... I well, think no, it's I mean, like... Peter Pan. Yeah, that is that is different. Now, where's the musical? I don't know the difference. Whichever one is super happy and youthful all the time. Well, well, I feel like I talked about that quote and how Jeff that fork quote is. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that is the first line of the seventh song. How nice it would be if we tried everything. I'm serious. Let's make a list. Are you sure that wasn't in his last email, too? <laughs> um, and se sevens are totally optimists. They always have faith that tomorrow is going to be a good day, and that's something that's really, really wonderful. Happy Monday. That, 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 that. The gut triad. Good. Is good. Next. So this is eight, nine, and one. Uh, these are all people that are really uh, in touch with and trust their instincts. <laughs> eight is the challenger. Um, eights, sometimes, I'm just going to preface this, eights get a bad rap sometimes because they are confrontational. And that makes some of the other types very uncomfortable. Because a lot of the time, the eight is the one that's willing to point out what's wrong with a person or a situation, which eventually is information that helps them grow, which is why eights are super valuable. But of course, in the moment, uh, they can tend to have issues offending people easily because they tend to be very blunt and to the point. Um, my wonderful roommate, Dietrich Morrison Jones, is a proud eight. <laughs> oh my yes. god. For the record, he was supposed to be here when I planned to say that, but he, he doesn't mind. We can still add him. Um, <laughs> he'd do the same to us, you know? He, he, exactly, he would. Which um, we'll face right. um, Dominate the environment. That is very Dietrich Morrison Jones. <laughs> um, they want, they, the eights are confrontational because they don't want to be controlled by any, any, anyone or anything else. Um, they don't like being mean or like upsetting people, but they want to be in charge of their own lives and not be throttled by anybody else, and they are willing to do or say whatever it takes to get what they want. That also makes eights the kind of people that really change the world. Eights are the kind of people who have the bravery and the um, 
just sheer inner drive uh, to really make a difference. So that's why uh, Dr. King is my example of anything. Um, he's an obvious person who is integral to the history of our country and uh, the way that it's progressed and uh, lost his life because of his willingness to uh, speak, truth to well, speak truth to power and just uh, make, he was brave enough to go out and make a difference in the world. And that's what is so powerful about AIDS, uh, especially when, in, when they are in health, they're the kind of people that make a big difference. Like, I'm really not trying to stir shit up, yeah. but like, could there be an argument that someone like Donald Trump is it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, I just think yes. that I'm on the same. Um, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, did, we, did we raise our hands for. Oh, we did not! Who is it? Who is who has eight as their top one, as their top three? Jay. Okay. <laughs> no. It's, it's, yeah. But yes, uh, a, a lot of political leaders uh, tend. Eight is very common uh, with political leaders because they're the kinds of people who are like, I'm gonna go do this and make a difference, and I don't care who's in my way. Got it. Okay. Yes. Would you put Sheldon Cooper as an eight? I would actually put him as a one. Okay, which we'll, we can talk about when we get to one. You just don't understand me sometimes. But here's the thing too with <laughs> typing. <laughs> important point to be made about typing other people and fictional characters. It can be tricky uh, because you don't know what's going on inside their head. When I was first trying to find my type, other people gave me all sorts of suggestions of what I could be um, that were mostly three and seven, which were the, the two, two of the ones that I gravitated toward immediately. Uh, because of how I express myself outwardly. Good old my roommate for two years, uh, Adam back there. Everybody wave hi. Hi. Uh, okay. Um, he is the single person on this planet that was able to call out the fact that I was a six when I read in the brief descriptions. Aww. Because he's the only Aww. person that knows my inner monologue because he lived with it for two years. Thank you for that. Um, that was so cute. That was, oh, that was so cute. Anyways, yeah. that one point, <laughs> point being, Typing other people, or uh, um, like when you look on the internet, like what type are all of the Disney princesses? <laughs> Every single site that you click will have a different type for most of the people because they're just hard to categorize, and most of them will be built on a couple of specific things that they do in the movie that um, point, they're like, oh, that definitely makes her a two. But there's another set of things that they do that point to another type. And so, uh, with, with the examples I provided, I try to just like point out specific things that make me think that way and then why I think they're a good example. But um, at the end of the day, typing other people is difficult. That being said, it is very common when people are trying to find their type that they are in denial about what type they are because they know kind of on the inside that they are one, but they don't like it. Uh, about half of the time, People are the type that they cringe at because they know it so well. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, AIDS are the kind of people that will shake the ground with all their might. Um, but when an AIDS is in good health, they start to champion uh, the innocent and uh, the undervalued in the world. They, they really rise up. Um, once they feel whole themselves, they start to rise up and help other people feel the same way. And that's, so helpful. Nines are peacemakers. They avoid conflict like the devil. <laughs> right next to eight. And yes, there are eight wing nines and nine wing eights. I don't quite know how that works, but they exist. Um, but eights are the confrontational ones, nines are the opposite. Um, they tend to be a little bit more introverted, um, not from a place that they don't like other people, they really value their relationships with other people, but uh, they tend to be a little afraid of rocking the boat. Um, they like to resolve conflicts. They also tend to not step in on some conflicts because they're afraid of making things worse or getting overwhelmed themselves. Um, and as far as uh, anger goes, where AIDS generally just express it. If they're angry about something, they're going to tell you about it and tell you how it should be fixed. Nines. Uh, deny their anger. The other type of people are like, oh, I don't get angry. Everybody gets angry. Uh, and that really comes from a place not of like thinking they're better than other people, but uh, they're afraid of uh, the anger that they can 
express sometimes and the way that it can hurt other people. Um, in growth, they go to three. Um, they get uh, more driven and more focused on goals. And in stress, they go to six and get more anxious and fearful. Uh, who had nine in their top three? Or as their top one? Okay. Our nines are Winnie the Pooh and Mr. Rogers. They are both uh, characters slash people that um, are just comfortable and happy in the world that they're in. Nines tend not to be uh, people that strive very much. They're definitely the most mindful, most spiritual, spiritually connected out of all of the types. And um, unfortunately, I don't have a nice poetic sleeping and last quote for this one because the nine song doesn't exist yet. It probably won't for another month. But as soon as it does exist, I will let y'all know. Uh, uh, but yeah, not nines um, are generally very good people to be around because they are a very calm presence. They can also get complacent and apathetic about things uh, if they're unhappy. So, once our last type. Thank you for sticking with me. I know this has been a lot of me talking at you, but it's all, all it's, there's a lot of information. So, once um, are kind of people who see in black and white, uh, right and wrong, they have a fairly specific and strict code of how they live their life and what they think is a good thing and a bad thing. And they tend to judge themselves and their other people and other people on their belief system uh, a lot. That can make them very like great taskmasters. Um, it, they can also be uh, judgmental sometimes. Um, they're re they really just in their heart want to be good people and are afraid of being evil people. Um, oh, there's the typo. Trying to control and repress it. Well, that was nice. Anyway, uh, ones kind of like nines don't like that they uh, get angry. Um, they recognize that. They recognize that they tend to judge other people a lot. Um, and they try not to show that as much as possible, but it also tends to pop out because it's such an integral part of it. So our reformers are Ron Swanson and Mary Poppins. <laughs> Mary Poppins I love because she's a, an example of a one in really good health because she uses, like she is very proper and very, like she knows exactly what the perfect way to live a life is for her. But she doesn't, she's not so judgmental as she is like constantly going around trying to help other people understand that and uh, make them better uh, without beating them down. Um, Ron Swanson is more of an average one. He likes steak, he likes yeah. bourbon, he likes, he's a, a libertarian, and that is how he lives his life. Um, yeah, Jacob, you can learn from that. What? One, one of their top Oh, yeah, two. that part. Uh, and then is that, who had one as their top one? I'm fine. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, ones are very, very perfectionistic. Um, they always, they look at a situation and they're like, I know exactly how I could change that so that it would run so much better and here's how we should do it. Um, they also do that with themselves. They're constantly thinking about what they should be doing whether they're actually executing it. Um, they feel like the list goes on forever of all the ways they could be better, spending their whole lives searching desperately to discover that grace requires nothing. That, uh, you know, when ones can realize that they are whole, that they are good people, that they don't have to keep striving to make themselves and everything else better, but they can just, when ones learn how to just be, they can really grow. So, we have five minutes. Does anybody have any burning questions?
Sarah. Okay, burning question though. Yeah. Like, yes. Not to make us all about me because I'm a three. No, but you have a really weird. Well, like sheet. I have a real, so just to let everyone know, I have like here's my numbers. I have 19, 19, 19, 18, 17, 16, 16. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like. Yeah. Um, Any of those could be your two. Right. So like, what do? Like, what you, you kept losing? Like, so do. I would direct you toward three, six, and nine. Yeah. Uh, as your top three possibilities, I mean, but just learn. If, if you read through three and you're like immediately identifying with it, then that's probably valid. Um, and you can consider both your wing to two or wing to one, depending on where, or as a three, wing to two or wing to four. Um, and thinking about uh, one thing, advice, piece of advice that was interesting uh, given to me when I was doing this for the first time without the test, because Carl told me not to take the test, actually, um, when no. I first looked at it. Um, and just to read up and research all of the types and then figure things out on my own, which is a different, also helpful exercise. Um, the test definitely expedites the process, though, because the conclusion I came to myself was also the one that the test spit out. Uh, the bottom line is, as you continue to read up about this and figure out how the system works, you'll start to notice things about yourself and be like, oh, that was a, it's like little tiny things. It's like the fact that I didn't cross the street because I saw someone on the other side of the street was like uh, me not wanting to risk a confrontation with them. Oh, that's kind of nine ish. It's little things like that that you'll start to notice about yourself once you uh, understand all of this a little better. Um, also, look at directions of stress and growth. Your dominant type should have directions of stress and growth that make sense. Um, so kind of a general question that I grapple with myself is um, why, I know like there are good things that can be learned, uh, you know, knowing these results, right. but why try to characterize personalities? I would like, what's your answer for Here's why the thing about, to um, that? There are nine types. Each individual person on this planet is a shade within, so like, we look at the shade. Admittedly, I'm like in the shape. Okay. I identify as six wing seven. I identify with those two specifically very strongly, but also I know I feel a big pull from two and three in myself. That's why I think it's okay to say, I'll identify with this one as my dominant, understanding that these other ones are also really important part of who I am. Um, everybody is a, if you think of these types as colors, everybody's a shade. Um, and so, and that's why, like, not everything in the, the long description, or even in the short description for your type will match. Um, I, like, for example, I identify as six. Sixes um, do not like to be generally, sixes are followers, they don't like to be leaders or stick out from the crowd. I do. Because being a leader means being in charge, means I have control of the situation, means I'm sure about it, that sureness is where the six is. And a lot of it is the motivation behind your actions more than the actual outward actions um, are telling about what you're aiming This up. So you said that, so when you have your like secondary one, mm -hmm. your wing, yes. it has to be the one next to it? It has to be one of the two next so to like it. So like for me, yeah. I none of the ones next to my top two are like even close. So, some people who teach the Enneagram say that you have to have a wing one or the other. Some people say you could not have a wing or you could wing both ways. Do what makes sense for you. Which in your case would be like, I just don't have a wing. I, which is totally fine. Adam? Are there any specific professions or fields or anything that has correlations? I know you said like politicians or aides and not and, and that's not a, three. You know, not not always, right. but like um, tendencies and stuff to look if for. If you go for working with to dollars. the uh, Enneagram Institute site, it'll like give a list, fairly long list of like people who they think fall into okay. uh, XYZ type. Um, musicians, which is surprising because none of us were this. Uh, fall into four a lot because four tend to be very creative and artistic and expressive um, in trying to have their very specific personality. They also like to express it through art. Um, but they're definitely the most creative type on the Enneagram. Um, 
I think, I'm trying to think of other ones. Um, there's, there's uh, composers, I mean, again, with musicians, there's a lot of composers listed under four. Uh, that's the one I can immediately think of. Um, business people, like really high striving, um, like Fortune 500, whatever, like the top business executives tend to be in the three or the eight category, uh, really boss type people. There, there are more correlations that just don't come to mind immediately. Um, like, like mathematicians are probably around five, researchers also probably around five. But the, those are broad categorizations that do not apply. Come Yes. <laughs> Do you want the uh, dominant emotion or the what the center? That one. Okay. Um, I was being nosy and <laughs> looking at Jenna's and yeah. Katie's and mine, <laughs> and I noticed that all of us in our top three had one in each thing. That happens sometimes. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, yeah, it totally. Are you uh, the thing for me? Like. I have, or when I was like, looking at the types, I was like three and seven. Those are my two types. They are not connected in any way whatsoever. Cool. And that's why I say like, it's okay that they're not connected in any way whatsoever. Knowing that that's a part of you is important, and you can learn from the information that's there. Thank you. Do you know, um, like, who, like who developed this? Okay. This gets into so well, because and. Related so, to, because yeah. my original thought was, I wonder if there are, because you said, you know, there are some people who speculate, you know, half of all people are sixes. Um, and I started thinking, I wonder if that's more, like, culturally centric way of thinking about that. Yeah. that because yes. especially, like, what I know of some <laughs> other cultures, there are entire cultures that behave more or less like one of these types, especially Absolutely. when you throw in the wings. So I'm wondering what culture the people who created this came up with, and then mm -hmm. her studying um, it, and like who it should be applied to. It's an American trend. Okay. That is where it started. It, the actual shape is kind of ancient. I don't know the whole story, um, but the popularization of it happened uh, in the 1900s. Kind of started in the Christian church in certain denominations, uh, and then became a much more secular thing within the last 10 years. Um, but a lot of um, as it has been more researched, um, it has also gotten more popular. But uh, that, that was one of the things that I've heard discussed is, um, do a lot of people identify, do those people that say half of all people are sixes, um, is that the case because it kind of started gaining popularity in the church, and church is a place where a lot of people feel anxious about themselves? I don't know. No, there's not a real answer for that. But uh, and I, I do think different cultures would potentially produce um, different kind of like no magnetic cultures. types, yeah. per se, because uh, really the, the, and diving into how types develop is kind of weird, but um, you develop your type throughout childhood both as a little bit of <coughs> nature and a little bit of nurture. Right. There's debates to which one, some people are like, it's totally nature. Um, Others think it's a combination of both. I think it's a combination of both because I think our childhood experiences define how we interact with the world as adults. Um, but it, it, yeah. Long story short, yes. Cool. <laughs> All right. We have performers, so let's do that. Yes. Yes. Yes.